Another day, another dollar. That's right. Can I just start real quick? Mm. On every studio, like a radio station or a podcast, whatever, there's always some kind of double meaning or a triple meaning to the studio itself. You know, like your studio, your your office acts as your office or your studio and whatnot, right? Okay. Right? What? What? <laughs> You're blocking your face. I'm sending a text message while you're oh, okay, talking. Okay, 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 okay. I don't mean to be rude, but you know. Well, in my aspect, or in my side of the world, it acts as my office, my studio, and also my daughter's toilet. <laughs> okay. No, physically. I didn't know right. going there. Oh, wow, nice. <laughs> That's where she goes potty potty. Nice. <laughs> Good morning, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the flip side with Jay and Noel. It's another day today. It is Wednesday in the U.S., April the 12th at 8.25 p.m. It is 8.25 a.m. tomorrow morning in the Philippines where Noel is. And there he is. What's up, man? Another day, another dollar. That's right. Can I just start real quick? Mm. On every studio, like a radio station or a podcast, whatever. There's always some kind of double meaning or a triple meaning to the studio itself. You know, like your studio, your your office acts as your office or your studio and whatnot, right? Okay. Right? What? what? <laughs> you're blocking your face. I'm sending a text message while you're okay, talking. Okay, 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 okay. I don't mean to be rude, but, you know. Well, in my aspect or in my side of the world, it acts as my office, my studio, and also... My daughter's toilet. <laughs> okay. No, physically. I didn't know you right? were going there. Oh, <laughs> wow, nice. <laughs> That's where she goes potty potty. <laughs> nice. Does she know how to read? Can she read already? My my daughter? Yeah. No, not yet. But she she knows like the basic like uh a couple of letters in the alphabet already. But she okay. already knows the alphabet and she can count to like ten already and all that stuff. Like letter B, letter I, letter T. No, 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 yeah, she won't be able to read that. Okay. <laughs> all right, all right. <clears throat> what is this you're sending me? Did you send me something? Yeah, yeah. I, I sent you a picture of what my studio looks like right now from my perspective, which is the reason why I didn't want to set up this whole camera thing right now. Again, apologies for being the cause of delay for our recording this morning but what you should have done is place that screen to the left or to the right so that at least you can still see welcome to my life then it would be the same thing if i put the screen left or to the right then the camera would still be left to the right i i would still not be looking at you because the camera would would be directly in front of you right this is where the camera was a while ago Right. So if I'm facing, I can't believe we're talking about this right now. If I'm facing the camera this way, I still wouldn't be able to see you. I would still be looking at the screen, which is what you were complaining about. Like, oh, you're not like looking at me directly. You're, it's awkward. You're looking in a different angle. It's not okay. the same. The, so, you, you see that if you're facing your screen right now, you see that little space to the left. There's that giant space that use only that side of the, of the computer screen. For the camera or what? Are no, you about? you're ding dong. You're, the camera is right in front of the computer. Hey, hey, there's hold on. no need to call me names. Okay, uh, okay hold on. For, for context, hold on one second here. <clears throat> what are you saying? So, this is what I'm looking at at Noel's desk right here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just so that everybody can see it and whatnot, and nobody's complaining, whatever. So, he can easily use the left okay. bottom left side or the left side of the computer screen without any you, issues whatsoever. For those of you just listening, by the way, he's showing me. He has to show me his screenshot. Oh, look at that! My screen, my uh, my thing. What happened? Gosh, <laughs> I hate my life sometimes. <laughs> That's. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. You know, it's just too easy. Too easy. Wait. So wait. What are you saying? What are you saying? So, I'm saying. Uh, are we gonna? Let's go back there. So, if you're looking at the uh, Noel screen right there, obviously, 
you can we're see back at the on the on the on the on the on the picture that I sent him, right. which I sent to you privately because there's um this Japanese uh what, what do you call this spicy thing on the left, <laughs> my drink, and then my car. See, it's not parked in the garage, but can and you see my Toyota Trueno parked in the? <laughs> can can I preface too that this is how you know that he is in the Philippines? Look at the, his oh, remote yeah. control. It's still in the plastic. <laughs> <laughs> At least my couch is not in the plastic bag. That's true. That's true. That's All right. true. So walk anyway, me through this. What do you want me to do? I'm just saying, like, you can actually use the left side of your computer screen for whatever it is that you need to do during the show. Do you think that I'm actually using... I shrunk. Okay, this is what I'm looking at. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to do the same thing to you. Yeah, because you don't have a freaking camera in front of your face right now. Yeah, I understand, but still, you know, you got to you just use uh, uh, time's up. one side. Time's up. Time's up. Time's okay. up. Uh, I got to get right. my coffee. Got to oh get my, my coffee. Oh, hold All on. right. Okay. <sighs> what were you saying? Just use one side, the left side, the ones that's not covered. Oh, that looks good. Why does it look so white? Be because it's buko. It's like real buko pie. Wow, this is actually better than I thought it would be. Wait, let's talk about this real quick. The last time I was in Baguio and we mm. ordered, we had buko pie. For some reason, the buko pie was parang blended. So it was like... Uh, Blend it was Blended or blended? blended it was almost like it was chocolate mousse kind of texture where it was right. like really soft it didn't taste like chocolate it tasted like buko but it was it 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 felt it it no not it felt it was it was blended this one i gotta give props to it although it's like i think i don't know if my friend was kidding me but he's charging me a thousand pesos for it um it's Jesus legit Christ, that's twenty dollars for a whole pie not just the piece, huh? This is not good. What does it taste like? No, it's twenty dollars. The thousand pesos is like twenty dollars, but that's for the whole pie, right? It's not good. No, she doesn't like it. I like it. I think it's okay. Well, I think it. Although, your... what I was trying to say was it's legit because it's got like chunks you know it's like orange juice you know if it's got pulp for me it's real orange juice if it doesn't have pulp <laughs> it's not real orange juice or it's like concentrated okay this one's got like huge chunks see that yeah yeah, yeah. That, that, maybe that it's a little like... too bright for the camera but yeah it's it's is it is it good at least with all honesty not because it's your friend's business or what no, no, no but i like it she doesn't could be better the the, the Laguna one is different. Right. It's right. a little is a maybe a little better, but this one, I guess it's a thousand pesos because it came all the way from Baguio. And take note, there's no there are no coconuts in Baguio. Is it? So that's why it can't be good. How can it be good if there's if the if the ingredients is not easily accessible? Coconuts probably came from Laguna, which is where the pies are. Which is probably no canned or pre packed. No, like from a tree, from a, a legit coconut tree you're all right i know but there and they see... shave it they shave it put it in a pack and then ship it to baguio right right that, right right yeah so that would be it, the most sensible way of shipping it otherwise the coconut's gonna if, go bad in a heated van or truck i don't know if you heard that but he's saying that it's possible that the coconuts were packed in a can went to baguio which is what we're trying now mm. and we're what 20 kilometers away from Laguna. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's why there's no way it could be that good. Yeah, but I got to give it to him because it's done in such a way that it, you know, the, the chunk, I mean, yeah, even, yeah. If it, even if it, the taste isn't 100%, at least the, the fact that it's chunky mm. is what makes it. Because so the time that I tried the buko pie in Baguio before actually it was made in Trinidad, which is 10, 15 minutes away from Baguio. It's another right. city. Uh, I don't know what they did, but it wasn't chunky. So right, right there, it wasn't. Just because of that, it wasn't good anymore. Well, that sucks. It's all about the chunkiness. 
Yeah, I, I can't imagine that being that good if it's coming from Baguio. I mean, it, I wouldn't. I'm not saying it's probably canned. What I'm assuming it's, um, you know, when you buy, um, it's like pickled, and then it's bagged or wrapped. Right. Yeah. There's a di- there's a difference. Yeah. Th- I don't think it's canned. It's probably in one of those vacuum sealed packs, plastic bags. Yeah. Yeah. With the but juices inside, so it stays moist. I guess it's a for effort. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Hold on one sec. While we're waiting for Jason's head to pop back up, I just wanted to point out our little TV screen up there that has our little logo of the flip side. And over there is my backdrop of uh, the mosquito killer. (laughs) The rocket, electric rocket mosquito killer that still has a uh, 75% battery so it should be able to last us throughout the rest of the the program sorry about that any day There's something any stuck day now thing. i'm so sorry something stuck that i had to deal with and it's getting annoying um so i was looking at that picture that you just sent about your computer screen i think it's so filipino that they keep their stuff wrapped up I actually, I actually complain about Filipinos. The, the car is always still wrapped up. The the the, the window visor, the, the window shade, and the car is always still wrapped up. I've the never seen that. The car when it's new is still wrapped. Like five years in, they're still paying for for they're still paying for the car, and there's still like plastic on the on the um, which, on the wi- on the visor. But this one thing. This one thing, this this remote control one thing, I, it needs to be wrapped because I eat while we're watching videos, and so I don't. Is want that a the, control for the TV? Yeah, for that that TV over there. Got it, got it, got it. Right, and it's got a specific Netflix button there. Ah, uh, and uh, Prime Video, Amazon. Honestly, Prime, I think. here. It's more, I don't see a lot of like wrap, like you mentioned earlier, like a plastic wrapped couch or plastic on walkway. Those, you know, those, um, those little plastic walking thing that they put in the ground so that the carpet doesn't get dirty. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. I don't see that in a lot of Asian houses. I actually see it in a lot of black people's houses. Especially mm. the couch being wrapped up in plastic. I don't know what it is, you know. Oh, Af- African Americans do that. Yeah, they wrap yeah. Their couch in plastic. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, guess I don't know why. I, I mean, although there there are a couple. No, I take it back. Chinese people too. I think in some places, you know how they have those wooden frame seats with the cushions. The cushions are still wrapped in plastic. <laughs> okay. So those are like the only times I've actually seen it, but mainly <laughs> in black people's houses. I've seen it a lot. They even have like those plastic wrappers on the floor so that people walk on it instead of um, the carpet, you know, because, you know, in Asian house, they take off the shoes. This is how it works. You, <laughs> you never really live in the present. You live in the future. So you have to think about the future. The present really doesn't exist. Doesn't really matter. What's more important is the future. The future is we plan to sell that couch or we still plan to sell this car. <laughs> right, so, right. So it doesn't look old, you know, after five years when we finished paying for it. Right. But this one, again, I get dirty fingers sometimes and I hate having to clean it. So, I mean, I mean, clean in between the buttons. So, right, right. That's that's my but reason. Those for are that. like the uh, the stereotypes that uh, I wanted to get into. You know, like one of the biggest stereotypes. I don't know if you ever had this or saw it. We definitely at my grandma's house. We definitely fell into that stereotype where you'll know. Well, you'll know it's an Asian house because when you walk in, there's like a million pairs of slippers or flip flops and shoes right on yeah. the walkway, right? Right. It's all over the place. There's a pair for outside, and then there's a pair for the and inside. And there's a pair for inside. I and I know that's crazy. There's like one basket for it, and then there's another pair for the toilet. So you got to keep changing slippers every time you pass through a major. I've never seen that one for the toilet. 
Well, yeah, we got one. Well, not here in our house, but I went to my cousin's house one time. And yeah, because sometimes the toilet is just wet all the time. And then so there's like a separate pair of slippers. Right, right. I remember that now. I, I think it because in the Philippines, there's, you know how here there's a sh- people you have to walk in or climb into the bathtub or you have like a separate shower that separates yeah. the toilet. Yeah. That's not really big in the Philippines. It's like the whole air. You, you take a shower where your toilet is, right? Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah, there's a divider between mm. the shower area and the... Yeah, yeah. So it makes sense to have a separate bathroom slippers, although I've never actually seen it, but it does make sense. Yeah, well, that's what bakya, the bakya is for. What the hell is there's... a bakya? You're kidding me. Wooden slippers? No, dude. I've been here forever. Um, I still know a lot of stuff. <laughs> I'm just saying, I don't know what a bakya is. What is that? You said wooden slippers? Yeah. Well, actually, they're more popular with uh, Japanese culture. Uh, you know how the kimono geisha ladies, they were walking with their kimonos and then they're walking really slowly with their... Well, they're not flip-flops, but they're... They, they, the thing that ties up to your toe looks like a flip flop, but underneath, what makes it a bakya is that it's made of wood and then it's raised up like two, three inches. Mm, bakya. And, there, and it's not it, and it's not like wedged like a like a lady's shoe. It, it, it this is really ah, uh, you didn't see. Uh, you, have you seen Initial D? No. It's a no. it's a well, it's an anime manga series, and then they turn it into a. Li- uh, real life action sort of movie it's about cars you know racing in the mountains that kind of right, thing right and then the big story about that is that the dad which used to be a racer uh taught his son to race or basically to drift that um uh, that's where they also got tokyo drift anyway so <laughs> he uh the guy learned how to drift by taking tofu from his dad's store to whatever delivery he needed to do, right? So he Mm. was a delivery guy on his car. Um, Anyway, there was a scene there where the the dad is cutting tofu and he's walking around with bakya because he's also throwing uh, the tofu, like the liquid, you know, like taho? Yeah. Uh, You have to throw the liquid out so it doesn't get like all soggy or or something something to do with the floor being always wet. So wow. he's wearing bakya, not slippers, because that's easily going to wet your toes. This one's raised up a little bit. And the guy, the dad, is, huh. you know, attending to the tofu. Um, and yeah, he's wearing bak- he's wearing a bakya. Yeah, it's wooden clogs, basically. Right. In yeah, so many yeah. words. I know, wooden I know. clogs, yeah. I'm looking at it right now. That looks kind of cool, though. There's so many different variations. And yeah, so the whole idea, the whole idea is to raise your feet up above the water line, or, right? You know, it's just on the floor, and so that um, it is, I'm sure That's it's also got to hurt some, now. It's also got something to do because you're just standing for a long time. It's not for walking, really. You're just uh. sort of moving around the toilet, and I think the whole idea is also that your feet don't actually slip on the wood right. as much as it would on on rubber flip-floppers right right well that's 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 actually kind of interesting i like that one but i mean going back to what i was trying to say um we fell we fell into the typical filipino stereotype when you walk into the house one that whole having like i said the the slippers and the shoes in the stairway but Mm. two as soon as you walk up that stairs there's like a giant wooden fork and wooden spoon hanging on the hanging on the wall (laughs) You know what I'm talking about? That's right. That's right. We, we my my grandparents actually had those, um, and it it was just sticking to the wall, right next to the giant rosary, wooden rosary. Right. You know what I mean. That's another thing that I find funny with the motorcycles here. Sometimes when we pull up to the stoplight, I see the motorcycles beside me. Every now and then, there's a rosary on the handlebars of the motorcycle, right? Of the, sco- of the scooter, right? You know? <laughs> and then sometimes you see some people with um, uh, air fresheners on the motorcycle. 
What? It, it, How does I that know. even get to work? It's in an open air. Exactly. It's funny though because you know that it came from maybe their car, and then it's like an old air freshener container that they just put there, maybe for giggles, for laughs and giggles. One time I saw on the back, there's like this canister looking sort of shock absorbers on the back wheel. It it's shaped in such a way that it's like a a, a sardine can. And some right. guy one time had like, you know, the, the logo of the sardine can on the shock absorbers because it's like just like this small, two, three inches. And yeah, it's yeah. it's shaped exactly like a like a sardine can. So that's what that's he a, had. That's actually kind of cool and clever though. But I wonder how they did that. Uh probably just a sticker that you can buy. And then he just probably put it up on 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 his uh, on his motorcycle but the whole point is you know humor right you gotta right, have a sense right. of humor every now and then i guess so i used to have fr- like other people i don't know if i don't know if you actually remembered so when you walk up our house at my grandma's house where i lived in san francisco so the wooden spoon and fork is right there and then the rosaries to the left and straight to the kitchen and the first thing we mm. always see at an Asian kitchen, especially in a Filipino kitchen, is a rice cooker. Right. You know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I saw I saw your rice cooker on your picture a while ago, the one where you sent me you were cooking. Yeah, yeah. How many rice cookers do you have? Uh three. <laughs> two are broken. We're using one. Oh, then why not throw it away? That's the other thing I wanted to ask. I actually asked that exactly for that reason. Why is it that Filipinos don't exactly throw anything away as well, especially when it comes to their because rice cookers? Jesus might come down one day. It might work again. <laughs> I don't even know how that's possible. I don't know. Which reminds but, me, there was this time that I bought a really tiny rice cooker back when I was living alone. Like literally the, the room that I was renting in Cebu was this big, right? Like right. you can see behind me. Yeah. And I bought like one uh, rice cooker that's good for one person. One of the, I think it was my dad's handyman. Anyway, somebody borrowed it, never never returned it. <laughs> Just That sucks. <laughs> But it's so little, though. I think I know which one you're talking about. That's literally like one cup, right? Yeah. yeah. Is that enough for you? No, but it was cute. So, <laughs> Of course, I had to find out the hard way because that was like the first time that I was cooking rice. Right, myself. right, right. Oh, but you know, the best thing that I learned um, because of Google and, you know, all these living alone survival techniques, you know, the the hot water, uh, the, the, the kettle, yeah, the you know, to get it to get it boiling. Yeah, do you know that you can cook instant ramen, instant noodles in there? What? Exactly, blew my mind. So I was looking at it on YouTube. They were boiling water, but since the guy or the girl was living all all alone, you know, they were cooking ramen noodles in there, and then that. So that's what they used to to cook. But come to think of it, saying that out loud, you can actually do the same thing on the rice cooker. And not actually well, cook rice and boil I mean, the I, water I, in. I understand that in a rice cooker, but in a kettle, yeah, like yeah. inside the kettle, yeah, that's right. That's weird because they don't have a stove. They didn't have anything to cook with. Right. They have a right. Well, I had a rice cooker, but maybe this person that was cooking the instant ramen didn't have a rice cooker or a stove, and they only had the the kettle. Mm. So they were cooking the the instant ramen in the it's interesting these these living alone survival ninja moves, you know. It's whatever works out, man. Whatever works out. Well, that's yeah. kind of cool, though. Yeah. Um, it's clever give, thinking. Let me just get this one out of the way. I'll give from the let's say a ten ten over ten version of the Laguna Buco Pai. I would give this one a six seven. That's Seven pretty and a generous. half, though. That's the that's highest. Pretty generous. Yeah. <laughs> from one, the, uh, one to the... five score. Sorry, my chef here is uh, yeah. correcting me. So from one to five, I'd give it a two and a half, maybe three. Just by the color of the pie itself, it looked pretty pale, like the crust of it and whatnot. Yeah, that's not going to fly for me. 
any kind of pie needs to be a little bit toasted, looking toasted. A, li a little darker, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a yeah. Apple yeah, pie, peach pie, buku pie, whatever it is, it needs to look a little bit more toasted and darker. Hold on, huh? Do you mind grabbing uh, the microphone over there? Can you tell me, can you tell us what you think about the buku pie that arrived from from Baguio. Let's let's just test it out. I, I want to see if the other microphone is working also. Can you hear her? No, oh, no, she's not saying anything. Hmm? You have to say something. Can you say something? Hello? There you Can go. you hear her? There you there go. go. Okay. Yeah. So, so what, how, what, you, what please describe the way to look the uh the buku pie looked um, as soon as you open it. Buku pie yung nilagay, not hindi siya yung puro na like ginawa mo parang in instant mo lang instant oh. buko pie, yeah. instant buko yeah and we paid 1000 pesos for this even the guy is is my friend yeah you know, yeah we we should be able to feel free to speak freely Absolutely. and honestly about it because we paid Absolutely. for it yeah well actually we haven't sent the money yet here's the literally here's the money <laughs> the payment for it and we're going to pay after we do this podcast. Nice, nice. And then I'll send him this recording to give him an idea about our commentary about the buko pie. So, so on top of that, the pie itself has literally traveled from Baguio. Yeah, yeah. He's, uh, yeah, it, it yeah, traveled so all the way. Maybe, yeah. maybe a little bit rough on the, um, on the uh, review because there's no way it'd be fresh. When it came to you, hindi ba siya fresh? Is it? It's not fresh. So it's it's so. But no, but is it the cooking, the actual cooking? Is it or is it because there's just too much time from the time that it got cooked to the time it was delivered? Here, the dog is interested, huh? The the oh the 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 ingredients that he bought, the supplier maybe. The yeah, buko yeah. supplier. That's probably what it is. I, I can't imagine it being fresh coming all the way from, from Baguio to your place. <clears throat> yeah. But going back to the crust though, you're you're right about it. I mean I didn't Yeah, that the looks last too pale. That I, that's it's the last thing that I noticed, but I think you're right. I'm yeah. See if I can get a good light on it. That's good. That? I, I saw it from where it was before. Yeah. It's it's anyway. If it's too light like that, it looks like it's undercooked or not cooked long enough, obviously. So watching that Thai movie Hunger yesterday, we, I'm really, and you know, Christine being able to cook, I'm really slowly, slow, ever so slowly beginning to notice small details like that. Yeah. But <clears throat> the burn on the crust that you were looking for, that one I didn't even, I didn't even notice. But you have the, to notice the food from the outside in. I hear you. I hear you. But it's funny because when I watch movies, I always see like, oh, that's the wrong, you know, the angle. Or did you see that extra? Right, the, right. That, that extra. They, they use that same extra on this other scene. It's like, <laughs> how do I even <laughs> notice these these things? You know, like, oh, on the first shot, the, the bottle was here. And then on the next shot, there's like a continuity error. They weren't. They and. It, you know the one that always really annoys me about movies when they cut to let's say there's two people talking and then there's an over the shoulder shot. Yeah. And then let's say there's a let's turn around. Let's say let's say they take a shot and let's say that I'm talking to you here, right? Right. So you're only <laughs> seeing my shoulder. This is an over the shoulder shot. You can see my shoulder only. Right. And then and then I'm talking to you and then let's say I'm saying something. Let's say I'm complaining about something with my with my hands up, with, and then the show over the shoulder shot. You know, it's showing my hands going up and down like that, right? right? And then when they cut to the your shoulder over the shoulder shot to my face, my hands are down, and I'm talking to you. So <laughs> that that's a, makes sense. So that's a continuity error because they only used one camera, right? And then they right. flip, flip the others, and then Flipped the the, movement the, actor, not the, same. the move the actors' movements weren't the same. But I think the way they do it now is they always have like two, three, four cameras running all at the same time because. You know, Which it film, should be, because you have to be able to get different angles. They're not using film anymore. No, but right. before they would, well, you know, back in the days when we, you and I would shoot movies, we only had one camera, one VHS tape. So Correct. each time that we wanted to change cameras, you have to do the action all over again 
Correct. Move the camera, do the action all over again, move the camera so everybody has to be doing the same thing. It but, has to be the exact same movements all the time. Anyway, we digress. We're done with the buko pie. You were talking about the cultural, how would you phrase that? Cultural things stereotypes. That you know, stereotypes? Cultural stereotypes and whatnot, you know? Like yeah. what other cult like uh other cultural stereotypes they notice for Filipinos in their homes? I can't think one off the top of my head, but I gotta say that I heard about I think it was Russell Peters, I think, that mm-hmm. he mentioned s- stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I, I think it was definitely Russell Peters and uh Joel Koy, I think, hit on it a little bit, right? Mm-mm. Yeah. So yeah. I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Always smells like uh, food in the Philippine house. So I don't know why. Well, they're always cooking too. That's because. (laughs) Yeah. um, Wait. I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Why is Pancet always in in some kind of party? There's always Pancet. Long life. It's a Chinese thing. And, And... and yeah. you're not actually well. I what I heard. I'm not Chinese, no. But what I heard is you're not even actually supposed to like cut the noodles because it's it the noodles sort of represent life. So you're supposed to just right like keep keep slurping it and not cut the noodles as much as you can. I heard. Uh, I don't know. That maybe that's just from my grandmother, but pancit canton, just anything like anything birthday, anything life related. There's got to be like noodles. Yeah. What is this, Papa? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. You, you you need help? You want me to take that back? But you know, after I yeah. think you're right. <clears throat> yeah, it came off. Sorry about that. Yeah. She's just she's just right here, like playing with her stuff right there, right there. <laughs> you know that that toilet behind you is a trip man yeah I, I was doing work the other day and it's funny because sometimes i was I, I was she'll just walk by and then just usually i'd notice her walk away but i didn't know sometimes i won't notice her leave mm. i'll turn around 30 seconds later she's still sitting there <laughs> you you so you just got it yesterday uh few yeah months it, ago. it it was in the bathroom, and then we moved it there. Oh, that's cute. A few months yeah. ago, I stayed in a friend's place in Pampanga. It was so funny. Their bathtub, on the side of it, there was uh, something hanging beside it. Was It was a male urinal for like a two, three-year-old kid. So it was hanging off the top. Of right, the, the round the, thing, the seat. Yeah, 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 at the edge of the of the bathtub. Yeah. And then there was like a urinal, and then on the in the middle of that urinal, there was like a little spinning thing. <laughs> <laughs> that that kind of, What if you're taking a piss pretty hard? That thing's splashing everywhere, or but the kid at least. If, if I were the two year old kid, I wouldn't be like trying to piss on it. I would be trying to like make it <laughs> exactly s- spin with my finger. So that was funny. It's funny you say that's actually one of the, the one, another Filipino thing. Like uh, like Joko actually talked about. Um, in a Filipino bathroom, there's always a cup at the side oh, of the uh, toilet. Right. Yeah. <laughs> for the I tabo. That. I saw that bit. Yeah, that's right. So there's the tabo. Right. Uh, it's, it's actually so he he made it uh, seem like or he the way he put it was it's being used for just to wash a woman's vagina and all that stuff, right? <laughs> yeah. But it's actually a double purpose, if not more. Where one, it's exactly that, and two, it's when people take a shower. They they sit down and they reach out with their hand to grab the table. And then that's what they use. <laughs> they sit down on the inside the bathtub. Or yeah. if there's no bathtub, right next to the toilet where the table is. And that's how they take a shower or take a bath. That's right. That's I remember right. That's, doing that's, that. You go up to my dad's room right now. That's No, not his room, but his toilet. That's how it's still sort of set up right now. So he's mm. got the shower. He's got the shower head. Uh, he's got like I think a little bidet or something like that. It's like the like the sort of modern amenities, but right. still still can't get rid of the tabo and bucket in the toilet. Huh. 
I remember my grandpa's tabo and my grandma's tabo. It's exactly located in that that same place, but it was a um a Folgers cup, like an old Folgers instant coffee cup, <laughs> and it's just right. It was just right there on the toilet. And we're like, what the hell? There, one of them was probably thinking, we don't really need a big tabo for this. We just need a little tiny small one. Right. It was small. It was like, you know, it was like that that big or whatever, you know. Yeah, so it it doesn't need to be big. Maybe if it's a big one, you know, you'd have to open your legs like really <laughs> so much to get that tabo Just in to there get that tabo. It. Well, I don't even know how that works to begin with. Don't don't you create more mess that way? They say it's supposed to clean everything up and less mess because the water is flowing down. But if you're I mean, Bro. if you're pouring the water and you're wiping, you're splashing everywhere. So <laughs> you're making more mess, right? <laughs> I don't mean to gross you out, but a couple of days ago, we were eating at the Karinderia. You know, the usual Karinderia that I, I, I sometimes Karen's. share. At Karen's, the ones that I, I share with you. So usually we sit on one side where all the food is, you know, where you turo turo, where all the f- food are displayed, right? Yeah. On the other end, and I forgot that we don't sit on the other end. I just said, let's, let's sit over here just to make things different because we're always sitting on the same side okay you know, I, I parked the motorcycle on that side etc cetera, etc cetera, and there were people there so we sat on the other side which is where they were cooking the goto are you familiar Ooh, with oh yeah those are good i remember those. Caldo, goto and i forgot the reason why we don't sit there is because it's hot you know you, yeah the the flames you could sort of feel it on your face but that's fine okay i was like i could just move my face away right and it's not always consistently hot anyway right what threw me off blew, blew me away was the cook or the lady that was checking on the goto to make sure that it was boiling needed to stir it right so she opened it up steam came out kind of flew to my face i had a little facial uh for two seconds there it was really hot but it was fine i didn't it didn't burn my face but it was warm anyway so we were eating our uh adobo or whatever and then so she and then uh, i don't know i probably looked away or what but then next thing i know she was stirring Okay, so imagine like this really big pot, deep, deep pot, maybe about at least six, six, 12 inches deep. Wow. She's that's stirring. Big. She's stirring. She's stirring. It's a it's a popular karinderia. She's stirring. And then when she takes the ladle out or whatever it is that she was using to stir. Right. It was flies water. No. I mean, it was shut a flat- up. I mean, it must have been clean. They probably don't use it to kill flies, but technically, it's a fly's water. And that's what she's using to stir it. It was cute. It was looked like it had like a little Mickey Mouse at the end. But yeah, that's it was... gross, bro. <laughs> that's just guess... gross. Maybe it just makes sense because it was, you know, how it's straight and then it's flat in the end. So maybe yeah. she's trying to it. <laughs> oh so... man, that is so disconcerting. I don't know. See, in my head, though, with my pet peeves and whatnot, I don't know if I'd ever go back there again. That's just well, gross. Well, I'll, I'll show you another thing. So here's here's a, here's a little box. I'm sure you're familiar with these lock and lock boxes, right? Yeah, yeah, we have those. So in the Karinderia, they have these boxes about 6 to 12 inches wide and the big deep ones, yeah. also. The big yeah. ones. Yeah. You know what they put in there? What? Pansip. What? That's where they put the pancit in those lock and lock boxes. Why? I don't understand that. I guess it's better than putting it in a pail. It, <laughs> or, or sometimes or sometimes I'm I'm at McDonald's or Jollibee, yeah. any fast food restaurant. Uh yeah, the 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 iced tea goes in a pail and then it goes into the exactly. oh, that's just lazy because they can just bring that that damn thing in the back to fill it up with iced tea. That's what it's yeah. supposed to be. Doing. They're supposed to be. Pick, I, I know which one you're talking about. Those metal containers. They're supposed to pick that up. Yeah. Put it underneath the machine so the iced tea is generated there directly. But they're too lazy to bring that out there. Ah. Uh... Oh, see, that's just foul. See, I hate that. Those, 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 the containers where you get the iced tea from, you can actually take that out, right? 
there's an actual machine that you use that for that you just put it in there and the 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 brew goes in there directly but they're so lazy to taking it out from there they're going to use a fletcher and like do that which tells me that thing is not being cleaned that's supposed to be cleaned every night because it's tea they mold easily Ugh! <laughs> so go back to the McDonald's and have a nice tea tomorrow. <laughs> so, so that that container is obviously not being taken to the back every night and cleaned. That icy container. And that's gross. That's really, I'm, really gross. What I'm basically getting at is the ingenuity, the creativity of the Filipino spirit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I don't think that applies to that McDonald's thing because that's scary. Like going back to the fly swatter, though, right? I mean, right. like you got that's what you got. That's that's an example of thinking out of the box. Right, right, right. You know, because sometimes I've actually seen people in the Philippines instead of using chopsticks when they're cooking stuff. Sometimes they're mm. using, um, I don't know. Some just they're just grabbing two woods and they're just. Two pieces of wood. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I gotta ask that. So when you eat at Karen's, what's the uh -huh. typical cost to like eat at Karen's? Uh, or, or, so for instance, if you go there, like you mentioned the last time that you can actually bring your own rice. Yeah, you can bring anything you want. Like you, you can bring your own jolly bee, they're not gonna feel bad about it. As long as you order something. Yeah, but that's crazy, though. I mean, I, I don't care about the other thing, but the rice? Really? People yeah, but actually no, but do that? You could if you want to, but nobody really does. Every now and then. Okay, let me answer your question. For two people, for two people, yeah, we start to raise an eyebrow when things, when the price goes above 300 pesos, $6. When we... And when it well, goes why would you raise an eyebrows? That means we've ordered too much or we're paying for somebody else's dinner or lunch ah. or breakfast. We, we've been there maybe a hundred times. Uh, it, it's never gone above, no matter what we order with two drinks, you know, dessert, extra this, extra that, whatever. It, it never really should go above 300 pesos, $6. Mm. And then, again, so, that's like what multiple entrees or ulams, and then multiple rice. Yeah, thereabouts. Maybe one, one like one viand, and then one vegetable, and then one rice. Huh. Well, yeah, we never actually get extra rice. Almost hardly. Hardly. That's not yeah. bad at all. Yeah, that's not bad. But, again, that's Karen's with the with the flies yeah. water. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, because you don't understand. I actually, I love eating at, at Karen's place. You know, the Karen, the, the places like Karen's. I love eating at those places. I don't know why. The food just tastes so much better for me. It's like, I don't know, you know? You're you're looking for something like Lutong Bahay. Yeah, yeah, That's, in a way. Because they actually really cook it. Practically, they cook it at home. Every morning, they take, for the most part. They, they take it outside, yeah. Yeah. Because, um, oh no, sorry, I'm talking about the this. There's there's a new thing in our neighborhood now. This is something that I haven't taken a picture or a video for you to sh to share with you yet. Yeah. Uh, so we're I think we're in a developing, almost commercial, but middle class neighborhood. We're definitely not next door where you know they're really high end. Right. Where there's like a wall. Right. Uh, and like two different levels of guard that you need to <laughs> the, the keep you out type of wall. <laughs> yeah. And then there's two different levels of guard that you need to pass through one ID here and then one ID there. Right. Anyway, so we're in a relatively middle class neighborhood, although it's technically called a subdivision, but anybody can just practically walk in mm -hmm. like the, the street vendors. There's a couple of guys that are, I told you about the, 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 the Mambabalot guy, right? That right. guy that has right. uh, speakers for his Speaker guy, yeah. when, when he starts shouting. There's a guy now with like a motorcycle and for I don't I, I can't really describe how he did it, but basically there's a trolley. It's like a it's a tricycle. The motorcycle is actually beside the whole kitchen. But basically the kitchen is like twice this 
Wait, is there a motorcycle? No, I think maybe they're just pushing it. Anyway, so these pots and pans, there's about five, six of them. Yeah. And e- each one is, he's selling maybe 50, 60 pesos for each meal. That's about a dollar, dollar, maybe dollar fifty, about a dollar for each meal. Plus so, rice is maybe 25 cents, 50 cents. It's it's like a rolling kitchen. Rolling carinderia, rolling Karen. Really? So and he's cooking yeah. it there, right there in that? Uh no, I can't I there are stoves, but I can't say that he's cooking it there. I'm sure right. he cooks it at home, prepares it, throws right. it in the pot, boils in the pot, and then he has the stoves with him, probably so that when he's out on the street selling it, it's still hot. Correct. Genius. Correct. Genius, yeah. right? I'll, yeah, I'll yeah, show yeah, yeah. you. Yeah. I'll show you when I get the chance. But yeah, I definitely just, want to see a picture of that one. It's one of those things that caught my attention because uh they're actually on the street where a lot of in his his um clientele his his market are actually the the delivery riders the motorcycle guys mm-hmm. people mm-hmm. like me actually but i just happen to actually live on the other side of the street where he's selling right and people that they're commuting right right so if there's if there's any police or barangay that tells him hey you're, you shouldn't be doing that here on the street you can just move to another neighborhood that's awesome that's awesome <laughs> everything's so mobile you know he's cooking it right there and then probably and then yeah. when he runs out of one particular dish he can just Right there, and probably underneath is like his supplies of like uh, a cooler. It's probably a bike that you know with the sidecar uh, that he built no, no, up. I, I remember them pushing, but here's the thing: I don't know where they get the water, but for sure he's not using the fly water as a ladle. <laughs> but but the the where he's getting his water and you know his, what his kitchen looks like at home is questionable. But right. Right. On, on, on going back to the Karens, the legit Karen on the on the corner store, the one that we go back to there, right. I really I really see the ice. And this these are the two concerns for me. The ice and the water delivery are legit. Like they look like they're really from a reputable source. Got it. Got it. You know, but this other guy, the one that's cheaper, I don't know <laughs> what his water source is and where he gets his ice. Because right. you know the dangerous one, the, the clean ones, what I heard, the clean ones are like if they have this there also, they're the tube ice. Yeah. Those are supposed to be technically maybe cleaner. The ones that are that are scary are the ones that the plastic, the ice that comes in a plat in yeah. Yeah, yeah, shaped yeah. yeah. In, you never shaped, know where that it, it's just like a, a long plastic bag like that, you know, where they just tie it at the top, right? Yeah. yeah. You don't know where that comes from. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I really want to see the current area that you guys go to, you know. Are you allowed to like rec- video there sometime? Bro, like I said, I, I've been shooting. It's just really a matter of editing sometimes. Oh my God. Come on, <laughs> man. You I want to see I the got, food selection, the, what I they have things, and whatnot. I got other things going on in my, with my life. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> the, the <laughs> other videos that are priority to edit versus so I, your, your, what, my super secret vlogs. It's been <sighs> a, it's, it's been a, um, Oh, bro, I do have something to say. All right, go ahead. I was pretty insulted with the thing that you said last week, and I didn't realize how insulted I was. What do you mean? Until, until after we finished talking about uh, how you said you wanted your son to learn the American life because it's so freaking hard there. What? Remember this, like something about like uh, your son, like learning or living the way in the U.S. Right. And then we got into the conversation about him living here. And then you're like, oh, no, I want him to learn the ways of the U.S. because it's more difficult here. And then no, I was like, oh, I never be? said that. I don't know if this was a dream, but and then my response was like, how could it be more difficult there? It's more difficult here because it's so much more ambiguous. Like life here is so much more. Right. Something about like the justice system or. Or something like that. I I never said that. No, I don't think I've ever said that. Anyway, Uh, it's 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 far, far fetched and far, far, far opposite of what I really want to do. Okay, you know, say I'm, it to me again. I'm trying to. But, I want. I want. I. I feel like, I'm okay. This is actually in my bullet points. 
I feel like I'm not teaching my kids properly in regards to my culture. Okay. Because life here is far, far easier than life in the Philippines. Yeah, it's funny. I misunderstood that somehow. And right. it it what what dug in my head was that it's more difficult there. Oh, yeah, because you were pre- look at the recording. Because you were pressing on the idea that if you want something there, you gotta work hard for it and it's more difficult, blah blah blah. Maybe that's yes. what not what you maybe that's not what you well, no, it's definitely what I meant, but I think in relation to how it is in teaching my kids, it was misinterpreted wrong. Because here, unless unless you're rich here and you're born into money, you gotta work for it. Just like everywhere else in the yeah. in the world. But it came off the wrong way in the sense that at the end of it, you said as if life was harder there than it is here. So that kind of stuck with me, like for a in couple regards, of days. See, that could be misconstrued into multiple ways, though. It could be interpreted in multiple ways. Because one, if yes, in a sense, yes, in a sense, no. In terms of making money, the opportunity is always more here. The misinterpretation and misunderstanding in that is even though the opportunity is here, it's not always easy. It's scarce. You know? Yeah. It's, yeah, you're making dollars, but you're spending dollars. Yeah, yeah. And if you're always going to convert it to how it is in the Philippines, of course, it's always going to be more here because it's dollars. So I was I spent like a couple of days thinking about what we talked about, whether I understood it correctly or not. Right. Point is I stand by what I said about how it's a little bit more it feels a little bit more difficult, at least for me, because things are a little bit sort of like you know how you gotta be born rich, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. Right. At the, but at the end of the day, there's still that X factor, which is luck. Oh, absolutely. The, the absolutely. way that I would I would describe it is that it's the same parameters, the same things that you need here, except the percent of how much luck you need is a little bit more here than you need luck there. There, like I said, you could work at McDonald's and sort of make your own luck, make your own opportunity. Correct. But here, it's like no matter how hard you work your ass off, sometimes if luck isn't on your side, That's it's just also what I have to different, say about though. That. Yeah, uh, I agree, but to, to an extent. But it's also different because the cost of living and to le- live a happy, healthy life costs a lot more here than back there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, it's definitely hard. You know what? Now that I think about it, though, it is. Uh, it's hard to give a biased opinion about it or unbiased opinion about it coming from my side because I don't know. You know what? I don't know. See, now I'm conflicted because I've actually experienced both aspects of it. You know what I mean? Right. I've I've experienced being poor there and being poor here. It's hard to say. It's hard to say. But what stuck in my head, which I... I would like to think you didn't really mean to say was if but I remember correct I think I remember correctly you said life is harder there because this was something about your son like teaching the ways of the US for your son right because it's harder there than it is here in the Philippines I remember you saying that so, you know what I I think I might have said that yeah I think I did might have said that and it now nah. so See, I was like that I don't asshole. know though that well, asshole. Why is that? Why is that? <laughs> My only experience in regards to all this stuff is the hardship here. Yeah, I can so, take what I have now here and live comfortably back there. So how can I compare? Right. So let's the, end it end it with this. Would you rather be poor here or be poor there? That's the difference though. <laughs> no matter what, poor is poor. <laughs> Ian Lang. That's that's the thing. I mean, 
I don't know. See, that's tricky because I, I mean, I honestly believe that. Trying to look through my handy dandy notebook here if there's anything else that I want to do. Yeah. <laughs> but, I, 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 it, it's this is we're gonna have to discuss this again, okay? Because I am so conflicted at the idea here that. Yes, it is harder there in the Philippines. <sighs> to give you a little bit more backstory, we were talking about you moving here. Correct. Right? And then it sort of segued into the idea about what about your kids coming over here? Are they going to be able to adjust? And then you were like, no, I want my kids to stay here and you know, live the U.S. life so that they know how it is to, to work hard. Right. <laughs> like, and people don't work hard here? So... That's that's why it was really sticky for me. See, that's the thing, though. The, the... People are saying that really life over here is better in comparison to the Philippines, okay? Like the Filipinos. Oh, boy. Here we go. Um, are they saying that life here is better? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. I I can't. I've literally experienced both parts of the world and both lifestyles of the world. Except you know what I here, hear over here in the Philippines, let me just say this that? real quick. It's really just the weather. I can deal with the bureaucracy. I can deal with the red tape and everything. But if there's no weather change to look forward to, like all 365 days of the year, except like when it's raining, it's still the same weather. It's still the same climate. <laughs> but the idea that, oh, it's going to be spring, summer, winter, fall soon, weather is going to change. It makes a difference in your psychology. It does. It definitely does. But winter, winter is just depressing. Okay, now <laughs> winter is very different. Winter is very depressing. I kid you not. You know, this past week there has been a drastic change in weather shift. Today was eighty-five degrees. Oh, poor! It you. was nice. Shut oh. up. <laughs> oh, but, we're gonna run out of time. Gotta go. Bye bye. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, we'll, we'll, we're going to have to talk about this again because I want to talk about this in the next time because the difference here and there, whatever. Anyway, to be continued. On the thank flip you. side. Yeah, thank you for tuning in again. We're going to run out of time. I need to speed this up a little bit. Again, this is The Flip Side with Jay and Noel. We'll catch you on the next episode. My name is Jay. My name is Noel. What? Catch us on the next episode on the flip side with Jay Noel. New episodes uploaded on Wednesdays and Saturdays.